Yes, yes. Welcome, everybody, to the Connecticut Lions Soundtrack Podcast here at Top Station. My name is Eddie Transcendent, and I am super excited. This is episode one of season two of the Connecticut Lions Soundtrack Podcast. And as you already know, we have with us today, uh, Willie Matos. It's, 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 it's going to be an amazing, um, an amazing interview. But before we get into the interview, I want to go ahead and thank everybody who's watching on Facebook Live. We do appreciate the support. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button. Uh, if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or on www.topstationct.com, thank you so much for listening. Please make sure you, su- you subscribe and let your friends know about the great things we, we have going here at, at, at Top Station. Uh, for those of you who have been following uh, Entrepreneurs of Connecticut, that uh, podcast is doing really, really well, and I do appreciate all the support that I'm getting there. Um, I think I think it's a it's, it's a beautiful thing. Not only the the, the people I've, I've been able to bring to this program, but the but the support I've been getting from the community has been amazing. Last week's last week's episode with uh with Jamie uh Santana from Avon was an amazing video. Uh, the the we, we're up to almost nine hundred views on Facebook. So please, if you haven't seen it, go check out that video right now. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure that you like and share that video for a chance to win. The um the gift bag the gift bag that she had with some stuff in it um I I, I think Reagan remembers what, what was in that in the basket it was a three piece lotion body wash spray scents nutmeg and cherry black cherry yeah so yeah if you haven't checked it out yet after after you get done watching Willie Matos tonight I, I need you to go down check out that video hit like and share it and and and, uh, and I think tomorrow she's gonna be doing the raffle um and with that being said uh, um Reagan's here with us today. What's up, guys? So please make sure that if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, any statements, if you want to just say hi, whatever it is, just go ahead and write it in the comments, and Reagan will read it. Um, if you have any questions for Willie Matos as, as we're talking, we'll, we'll take breaks here and there, and Willie will answer your questions live. Um, so if you have any questions, any comments, please make sure that you do this today. Um, I don't think, and hoy en día, today... We don't we don't get to see Willie every, every, every day the way we probably used to back in the day. You know, Willie's Willie's kind of relaxing more these days. You know, not hiding. <laughs> he's not hiding, but 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 he's not, he's not really out there. So if you have any questions, I would I, but don't put him on the spot because I don't I don't want this guy to get nervous in here. You know, but no, but 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 seriously, if you have any questions in the comments, please make sure to ask those questions. And uh, and Reagan, Reagan's probably gonna butcher your name, but she but she's gonna read the question. I apologize ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> but she's she's gonna she's gonna uh she's gonna read it she's she's gonna read the questions so please uh please make sure you ask those questions and i uh, i really do uh appreciate it um so with that being said willie how are you i'm okay how about you i'm, I'm good i mean how's your audience <laughs> the, the, the audience is, is, is great the audience is always great man the audience is is my is my oxygen you know i can't i can't live without them you know, I need them, and they, they make they make Top Station what it is. They make this program what it is. And truth be told, without them, you know, we, we wouldn't be here. You know, that's just the way As it is. We used to say in the older days, uh, the masses are the ones that make history. Yes, yes, definitely. So, so I mean, I'm mean, I'm just here, uh, uh, you know, sharing some love and and, and being able to to hopefully uh, show people things that they don't know and let them meet people who they don't know like yourself um but at the at the end of the day it's all about them it's not really about me you know it's about them learning about their history and that's what we're doing here today um but first and foremost i want to thank you is is definitely snowing outside um way more than two inches you know um and you still made it and, and so and so I, I i applaud you and I, and I thank you for coming my pleasure yeah um i, I didn't re- i didn't want to cancel and and carolyn your daughter you know she texted me she said uh she said, hey you know are we still on for tonight I said, well, I'm not sure. I said, I'm not sure because you know it's snowing, and I don't want you know I don't I don't want you guys driving, and you know something to happen. And she was like, well, you know, I spoke to Papi, and and he said, palante, let's go, you know. Revolution goes on. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so that got me kind of excited. I said, oh, I guess, I guess we're going forward, you know. So again, thank you so much for coming. I really do appreciate it. And and it's, uh, it's I mean, Reagan will tell you it's an honor for me to have you to have you here with me today. So I'm super super excited. That, that's why I have the smile on my face. Usually, usually I'm upset, <laughs> but today. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm excited, and it's definitely a beautiful thing. Um, but I, I wanna, um, for those of you, who, who, for those who who don't know you, who may be watching or listening right now, somebody might be driving in their car two years from now, listening to this podcast. I want, I want them to know who you are. But I want to start from the beginning. I don't want to start five years ago. I want to start 11 years old when you came to to the United States. Well, like you said, I I, I was 11 when I came to 
Bridgeport. Okay. With, with mom and dad? Uh, I, or? I didn't stop in New York. No, uh, okay. <laughs> you didn't make a stop? I came straight here. <laughs> uh, and um, at that time, there was only maybe 100 Puerto Ricans in the city of Bridgeport. Really? Wow. And uh, we lived at the corner of uh, State and Warren Street. Okay. My house was taken down by the federal court, <laughs> the new federal court building. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so across the street from where the Holiday Inn is, is now, right? The hotel is there now. Uh, no, that the Holiday Inn is uh, a little bit further down. Okay. Ac- across the street from where the, I guess the Connecticut Post building is still there. Oh, that okay. That yeah, uh, you know, I was th- I was thinking about the other courthouse. Okay, I know I know what yeah. you're talking about. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Connecticut Post building. Okay. 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 And um, uh, I was a uh, happy-go-lucky. You know, 11 year old, and uh, I liked girls then. I still do. <laughs> but why, why Bridgeport? <laughs> well, uh, the reason for Bridgeport is something that I think that uh, uh, people in, in, in our community need to understand how and why we came here. Okay. Because there's all kinds of stories out there. You know, more, of a, a lot of the negative ones say that we came because we were looking for welfare. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, welfare didn't really exist at that time, yeah. you know, per se. Uh, people, uh, uh, the in, at that time, there was a labor shortage in the United States okay. because of the Korean War. And we had just gotten through the uh, Second World War. Yeah. Okay? Uh, the suburbs were beginning to open up. And uh, because there was a labor shortage... The what was then called the labor board. I believe it was the labor board. It wasn't the labor department. But okay. The labor department grew out of that. Okay. They had an active campaign to recruit workers in Puerto Rico. Okay. To bring them to Bridgeport because the factories that manufacture a lot of the armaments. Yes. Uh, for the war. Yes. Uh, couldn't find any help, so. Uh, Puerto Ricans were a perfect fit because by that time, Puerto Ricans were natural born citizens. Yes. You know, if you were born in Puerto Rico after 1917, through the Jones Act, you became a citizen. So they wouldn't have to worry about uh, visas or anything like yeah. that. They just come right over and they could just go to work. Start working, yes. And, and my mother and my father came here because of that. Okay. Uh, and a lot of Puerto Ricans came here because of that. They came to work mainly in the factories that existed in Bridgeport at that time. They're all gone now. Okay. Okay. They don't exist because we have a different type of economy. Yes. But at that time, it was Bridgeport was a uh, manufacturing town. Yes. An industrial manufacturing town. Yes. And um, uh, conditions in Puerto Rico were not good. Yeah. Because of certain policies that the United States instituted, the United States government instituted in Puerto Rico that had ruined the Puerto Rican economy, really. Okay. So uh, uh, Puerto Ricans were forced to, sort of forced to uh, migrate and come here. Okay. But they were recruited. Yeah. And not like other people say that we came looking for a welfare check. Yeah, no, no. You know, when I was growing up, I didn't know one person or one family yes. who got welfare. Because people used to come over, and the next day, there would be people from the different factories knocking on the door, okay, asking them to go work for them. Oh, wow. That's how it was. Yeah. That's all. So, so pretty much work was the reason why, that, that work was kind of what attracted most Puerto Ricans to Bridgeport. Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and so so you come down, but you're you're a kid. You're 11 years old, so you're not working at 11 years old, are no, you? No, I, I had to go to school, and okay. uh, of course, I didn't speak any English. Okay, okay. okay. So uh, I had a, a, a difficult time, you know, the first few months, but I kind of picked that up uh, rather quickly. Yeah. My mother, uh, who was always an advocate of education, she yes. always said education, 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 they can't take that away from you, okay? And 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 she had gone to school in Puerto Rico when all classes in Puerto Rico, uh, by law, 
uh, had to be given in English. Okay. And only a Spanish class did you type in Spanish. Spanish, okay? yeah. And that's another instance of another law that was passed by the U.S. government okay. to force English on the Puerto Rican people in Puerto Rico. Okay. But she learned English while she was in Puerto Rico. So when you moved here, she already knew? When she already knew, okay. and she was always correcting us when we were saying <laughs> something wrong. And we used to make fun of her later on, you know, because she used to say, with her accent, she used to say, grammatically speaking, Wilfredo, that is not the way you're supposed to pronounce it. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but she could, she could recite, <coughs> excuse me, Lincoln's Gettysburg address by, uh, address by memory. Really? Yeah. Now she, she taught me how to recite it. Also, <laughs> I still remember parts of it. Wow. Um, now I just I just read it just recently. It's funny you say that. Just I was doing some research. Um, now, were you an only child? Were Were you an only child or? No, no. I have uh, four brothers and sisters. Four brothers and four sisters. <laughs> no, no. Two and two. two. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Three and one. Three, three and one. <laughs> they're, they're still in the majority. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so when you moved here, everybody moved together. You, everyone, no, 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 no. Like most Puerto Rican families. Stuff stayed behind. The man came first. Mm -hmm. My father had been here in the 1940s. He had gone back and then uh, decided to come back once again. And the next sec second time that he came, he came with my mother okay. <clears throat> and my younger sister. Yeah. She was like like a baby. Yeah. And then they they sent for my uh, uh, two older sisters, and then they sent for me and my brother. Okay. Okay. At different times. Yeah. Because there wasn't enough money. Yeah. To pay for the airplane ticket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so but but finally everybody is here. You're here. Um, within a few months, you started to pick up the English language. Um, Everything. <coughs> I'm sorry. No, 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 don't worry. The, um, I, like I said, I went to school and at the beginning. It was very nice, you know, everybody got along well, you know. But as the number of Puerto Ricans started to increase that came to, uh, to Bridgeport and, uh, Puerto Ricans always spoke Spanish wherever they went. Yeah. They don't care. That's their, their language. Yeah. And uh, something they can't take away from us. Yeah. They spoke Spanish and some people were, you know, they, they didn't like that. that, 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 that they, and they started saying, speak English, you're in America. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I wondered about, about that being in America because I figured that Puerto Rico was part of America. True. Before... The United States existed. Yeah. So, um, but 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 I uh, just thought about it. Didn't know anything about it, yeah. you know. But as a couple of years after I was in school, I remember I had an incident with one teacher, uh, an arithmetic teacher. I remember, and I had done my homework, and I there was a one of the problems to be solved, okay, uh, was something, and just to give you an example, okay, yeah. it wasn't exactly this, but, you know, two times two was four, okay, and she kept saying that I had it wrong, you know, and I kept saying that I had it right, you know, and she got mad, and uh, she told me, why don't you just go back to where you came <laughs> from? Wow. Okay, and uh, I got up, and I slammed my my hand on the on the desk, and I said, "I'm an American citizen, and I don't have to go any place." Okay, and she said, "Take your books and go down to the to, to the principal's office. You're suspended." Yeah. So I went down to the principal's office. This is on the second floor that the room was. The principal's office was on the first floor. Yes. And when I got to the principal's office, she was waiting for me at the at the entrance to the office, and she says, "Go home and come back with your with your parents a week from today. You're suspended." Then ask me what happened. Wow. Or anything, just send me home. Yeah. Okay. 
I remember my mother came in with me uh, a week later, and I was admitted again. Okay, but that was one of my first th one of the things that I remember. Well, one of those experiences uh, that then growing that, growing up, I, I must have been there. about about uh, maybe thirteen at the time. Wow. Okay? And then something else happened. Well, be, be, before before we go there, I'm just gonna. If, can you do me a favor? Because some of the people are saying that they can't hear. If you could, can you just go there, the the blue one, and just put it up a little bit. But don't go crazy. Like just watch the green. Show the green. Don't go too much into the yellow and red. Okay. Hopefully you hear better now. Uh, for those of you who are watching on Facebook, um, we we put up the volume a little bit. Maybe you'll be able to hear it now a little better. I do apologize. And before we go any further, uh, Alma Maya says uh they still don't like it when we speak spanish to each other <laughs> she said they they use our bi bilingualism when they need it for their own purposes <laughs> um but go right ahead i'm sorry you said when, well, you, when you were 13 yeah, then, then when i was 13 i was remember i was in the spelling class and I, at that time i don't know how they do it now but at that time the teacher used to take a book yes. that had a lot of words in him and she would take one of the words, for example, uh, nosy, okay? Yeah. And then she would ask one of the students to uh, compose a sentence using the word nosy. Nosy, yeah. Okay? Well, on that day, she held up the book and she stood, she was standing, I was sitting down and, and she was standing right in front of me. Yeah. And she picked up the book and she said, uh, a foolish, okay, and then she didn't ask anybody to make a sentence. She made a sentence herself. Oh wow! Okay, and she says, "The Puerto Ricans who shot the Congress were very are very foolish people." Wow! All the all the eyes in the room turns towards me. There were two Puerto Ricans in the room okay. like at that time. Yeah, so it was the old Roosevelt School. Okay, okay, in yeah. the South End. Yeah, and. Uh, and I just said, what the hell is going on? I'm asking myself, okay, and I see all the, and why did she, did, did she do that, okay? I had no idea, okay? So it was just before recess. Recess was, you know, a break that you get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know whether they call it the same now. They do, they do, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and everybody went out into the schoolyard, yeah. okay? And when I went out to the schoolyard during recess, the whole school made a ring around me, okay? <laughs> and they started calling me names, okay? And wow. telling me to go back to Puerto Rico where I belong and this and that. And I, I still didn't know what was going on or what triggered well you know, probably, in, pro pro probably inspired by what the teacher was saying uh, uh partly yeah okay but there, there had to be another motive I, yeah. I said to myself what the hell is going on but i remember uh, getting you know being defiant and saying i don't I, I don't have to go anywhere i'm an american citizen you know and uh they were gonna beat me up but a, a teacher <laughs> intervened and, okay. and saved me okay yeah. but i i am sure that <laughs> if, it, if, if if i had argued some more you know i would have gotten beaten up but i when i went home i told my mother what had happened and uh, she started to explain to me that the Nationalist Party of Puerto Rico had gone to the Congress and they had shot, mm. the, I, I can't remember what it was, the three or four or five congressmen. Okay. And, uh, and I didn't know anything about the Nationalist Party. Okay? I didn't know about anything about uh, why anybody would want to shoot, you know, at the Congress. Yeah. But I said, wow, now I know why they came after me. Yeah. He says, but I got to learn about who, who, who these nationalists are. Yeah. Okay. So I started reading up on, on the Nationalist Party. At, okay? at 13 years old? At 13. Okay. Okay. And 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 uh, uh, I started reading about Abiso Campos. I had a book at home that had been left there by a cousin of ours that had visited. Yeah. That had an, uh, an anthology of uh, Puerto Rican poets. Okay. And I started reading some of their, of their poetry, and I noticed that all of the poets were nationalist or independence uh, followers, yeah. okay, uh, from Puerto Rico. And I 
love their poetry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I started to question, you know, whether the nationalists were justified or not in doing what they did. Yeah. Okay. So I started getting into the history of Puerto Rico. Came to the conclusion that they were fighting. They were freedom fighters. Okay. okay. And that the what they did in in, in Congress. Uh, was to call attention to the world because oh, yeah. the United States was getting ready to impose uh, a different type of, of, of government in Puerto Rico that they felt uh, was a detriment to uh, the independence movement in Puerto Rico. Okay. And also that they have been targeted to be eliminated, you know, physically yeah. eliminated by uh, U.S. forces in oh, Puerto wow. Rico. So... That led me to uh, a deeper study of, of, of Puerto Rican history and the relationship between the United States and Puerto Rico. And I came to the conclusion that, you know, Puerto Rico, way, way back then, that Puerto Rico was a colony and was being treated like, like a colony. You know, it was being mistreated. And I made a connection between that and the treatment that people were getting in Bridgeport because by that time in Bridgeport, uh, discriminatory practices began to appear against Puerto Ricans okay. in housing, yes. in employment, yes. et cetera, et cetera. And I experienced a lot of those, you know, yeah. too many to go into no, 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 detail. No, 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 I understand. But, but uh, it was like, for example, you're trying to get a, a rent an apartment on the corner of Howard and Fairfield Avenue, yes, or Hancock and Fairfield Avenue, and Puerto Ricans going around looking for the office so they could uh, submit an application to rent an apartment, and everybody in the building coming out out, out of the windows and hollering, "Look out! Look out! There's Puerto Ricans in, in in the neighborhood." Oh wow! That that type of yeah, yeah. type of things. I, yeah, I've experienced all of that. Okay. Now let, let let me let me ask you this because you know again you know what I'm thinking about you're 13 years old I'm and I'm thinking about the things I was doing when I was 13 years old right <laughs> you know and I'm thinking about the things that you know like what were you doing when you were 13 you know and 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 so um how 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 does Willie have this mindset at 13 years old to start researching and to start putting these things together how does that happen is there not anything else going on? No, well, I, you know, the other thing that I did was that I became, because I learned English rather quickly. Yes. Okay, I think by the end of uh, one year, I was able to speak uh, English, uh, not very fluently, but I understood everything and I could explain myself. Yes. And, um, and I sort of became the interpreter for the Puerto Rican community okay. in Richburg. Okay. You know? And if people have problems in court, I, they asked me to go to court with them to serve as an interpreter. If they okay. had to go to any uh, government office for anything, they uh, to see a lawyer asking for legal help. So I, I witnessed firsthand the way that these different uh, agencies, institutions treated Puerto Ricans when okay. they went there for services. Yes. And it wasn't pretty. Okay. okay? It was usually very negative uh, uh, and and very discriminatory. Yes. Okay? So that that yeah, but but I didn't really give it. You know, I mean, I I thought about it. I didn't like it. I think it began to. Uh, I, I began to grow angry. Okay. Okay. At some of those practices, and I said, it shouldn't be. You know, and. Uh, so, I, so, I, so you, you try so, to learn, learn more. So you turn the anger into into the, the anger kind of inspired you to want to learn more about what was going on. Right, and then of course there was say a, a lapse in between, and 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 uh, I went to work. You know, then I got married. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I experienced some uh, some discriminatory treatment in looking for work. Okay. Okay, and. Uh, then one day I decided that I didn't want to uh, work in a factory anymore. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was working in a factory at that time. And I, um, uh, ABCD, which okay. is still around, yes, uh, was uh, uh, running a program for the uh, anti-poverty. It became the anti-poverty agency in Bridgeport. Okay. 
and uh, they open up uh, different uh, centers throughout the city, okay. community centers. Uh, and I applied for a job with them, and uh, and I became uh, a coordinator for one of the for one of the of the centers. Yes. And, uh, and and when I did that, I I took a pay cut. Yeah. <laughs> Of about a hundred dollars a week, oh, wow. which was a lot, a lot of money then. Yes, okay? yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I went from earning like two hundred, three hundred dollars a week at that time. Oh wow! To earning ninety-five bucks a week. Okay, but it's what I wanted to do. Yes. I wanted to become a social worker. Yes. I had decided, based on all of the things that I had experienced. Yes. Uh, since I had come over here, I said, I want, I want to help people. Uh, because I know that uh, the situation uh, is such that they need this type of help, and it's, I felt like it was my duty yes. uh, to do that, that I had something to give. Yes. Okay. And I went in, and uh, from there, uh, uh, I discovered that uh, the anti-poverty agency was not enough. It wasn't doing enough. Yeah. I became exposed to the uh, Black Panthers, okay. Malcolm X, and then uh, uh, later on the Young Lords. Yes. Okay. But uh, before uh, I became a, a, a member of the Young Lords, we had started in Bridgeport already a, an organization that we called SPIC. And people say, why are you using that word, yeah. SPIC? That's denigrating to Puerto Ricans. Says we want to give it a positive yes. uh, meaning. Yes. And uh, we said SPIC means Spanish Power in Command. Nice. S P I C. Yes. Okay. Spanish Power in Command. Beautiful. Okay. So that organization became a militant organization. We looked at everything that was going on and we figured our leadership ain't doing anything for us or for the community, you know. Uh, abuses have been committed committed all the time. Yes, we need to do something different, and you know, SPIC became like the first uh, uh, organization that took a a militant approach to to dealing with the problems of the community. Okay. Out of SPIC, uh, uh, we became. Young Lords. Okay, and, and and I'm just, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause right there. I'm gonna pause right there. I give you a chance to get some water, and uh, I just want to take a few seconds to again again thank everybody who's watching on Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna ask Reagan, Reagan, if you could um if you could bring the volume up like as far as you can. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So okay, I'll do that, and then um and just put it as far as you can without without you know what I mean. Without getting to the red. the red. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to go ahead and thank everybody who's watching on Facebook. We do appreciate the support. Um, thank you for tuning in to the, uh, the the premiere of the second season of the Connecticut Land Soundtrack Podcast here with Willie Matos. We're having a great time. Great conversation. Uh, before we get back into the conversation, I want, I want to give some shout outs to people who are listening. Uh, I want to give some shout outs to, uh, let's see, we have Mari Reyes Sambito, Grace Roman Vega, este, Marian Ortega. Uh, let's see, uh, Alma Maya, Rosa Flores, Doreen Torres, uh, Teresita Cabán, Wilfredo Soto, Christian Robinson, Raul Rivera, Mayra Chai Music, Janine Quiñones, Maria Arroyo, Carmen, Carmen Nieves, Luz Morales, Luz, shout out to Luz, she's a uh, number one fan of the, of, of the program here, uh, uh, Karen Gonzalez obviously is watching. Uh, Patrick Valcourt, Mari Ramos. A lot of people tune in. Antonio Torres, uh, Edwin Rivera. Thank you, to, thank you to everybody who's who's uh, who's watching. And I, I just want to uh, read some of the comments that are on here before we go forward. Uh, Ma Mari Reyes says, uh, "Willie, you have always been my hero." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grace Roman says, "It." Uh, Era, era estas la que querías poner? I'm not sure. Um, Grace Roman says, Hola, Willy. Uh, Alma Maya commented a little while ago. Um, let's see. Carmen Nieves says, Hi, guys. 
um, Tonen and Simon Cabrera says hello. Carolyn says hello. Antonio Torres says hello. And uh, Rosa Flores says the volume is good. I can hear him perfect. What an inspiring and, and educational story. Edwin Rivera says great interview. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions for myself or for Willie, please make sure you ask those questions in the comments. And we, will, we will read them here live. Um, yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, so we'll keep it up. We'll keep it on Willie. Um, so, so let's go forward. So, Spick, you said. Uh, uh, so, how long were you were, were Spick uh, going forward? Uh, probably about uh, two years. Okay. Two years, I Spick, uh, because then the the young lords made made their appearance uh, in New York, and uh, we looked at what they were doing, and we said, "Wow, that sounds like what." Uh, we're trying to do yeah. also, and uh, I was always a believer that we needed to have a, a national movement, and, okay. that, and that, and if we couldn't have a national, movement, at least a regional movement, yes. and uh, felt that uh, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, at least, okay, uh, Pennsylvania, of course, uh, not that far either. That at least those. Uh, the, the struggles in those cities should unite, you know, yes. to, because we were fighting the, for, for the same thing. So um, we contacted the young lords uh, and uh, we sat down, negotiated, and uh, we became, the uh, SPIC became the, the uh, uh, young lords chapter in Bridgeport. Okay. And did, what year is this? This is uh, 69. Okay. Okay. 69. Say, maybe, and, maybe 68. In 1968 or 1969, how, how many years are you married at this point? Uh, let me see. Wow. You got me in trouble. I'm not going <laughs> to remember. <laughs> and my anniversary is coming up pretty soon. <laughs> Uh, okay, in, okay. in 69, we got married in 63, so... Okay, so six, six years? Six years. Okay, can I ask you... Uh, I was 32 years old. 33? 32. 32. 32, and I was the old man of the young lords. Okay. They call me the old man. Okay. Because I was the oldest. Yeah. Now, so now... You can uh, see how, how young the young lords were. How, were, how, how they, old were they? they? They were really young. Like, like teenagers? Some were teenagers. Okay. You know, others were... Maybe twenty twenty one, but okay. no nobody. I I was the old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now can I can I ask you just, just to kind of uh, get off topic a little bit? How did you meet your wife? I uh, met her. I used I was living on Casus and Clarence okay. on the corner. Yeah. And she used to take the bus there, uh, right around that corner. Because she lived right across the street from me. Okay. But I had not ever noticed her. I was in and out at that time. I think I was uh, 20, 21. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, my sister saw her one day walking down the street, you know, from the from the from the bus stop to where she lived, and she said to me, "Wow, look at that." Uh, young woman that just moved in. She's yeah. kind of cute, you know, good looking. So I looked and I said, yeah, she is good looking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a friend of mine lived in the same house that she was living. Yeah. So one day she was on the porch. I said, I got to go and meet her. So I just went over and introduced myself. And the, the rest is history? It's... 55 years. It's going to be 55 years. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So it was, it was, uh, was, was it the same feeling for her, for, for you? She, or, or? She, well, I, she, I, I don't know if she has seen me before or not. <laughs> you know, I probably, that was probably the first time she saw me. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, 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 uh, that's amazing. And, and that, that was, that was it. You met her that day and then. Then we were, we, you know, we worked, worked together, uh, uh, Novios, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. My girlfriend, uh, I was the boyfriend, <laughs> yeah, for about a year, and then at the end of a year, we, we got married. One year. One year. Wow. Okay. Well, things were different then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's 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 uh, that's that's great. That's that. Now now um, 
as you were, uh, you know, you're in, you're in your twenties, you're you're coming up. Obviously, you're thinking about different things as far as like the community and what you can do to help, and and you're fighting these these these, these uh, you know these uh, as you were saying, the community wasn't helping you the way you, you thought you should be helped. The Puerto Rican community wasn't being helped, and so you're fighting that battle per se, right? But now you're now you're involved with somebody. You have a girlfriend now. You have a wife. Was your wife involved as well, or was she kind of? She she was uh, uh, not not really involved in in the struggle per se, but she she was a supporter. She supported you. Yeah. Okay. She was a supporter. So so she was kind of. Somebody... As a matter of fact, she probably supported us, you know, uh, uh, to the limit because uh, at one point, you know, th during those years, you know. Uh, I wasn't as disciplined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, sometimes we had five and six young, lo young lords from New York staying with us at the house, and she was cooking for all of them. And although we, we, we made it a point to and uh, to to assign people to to cook. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Men, men and women. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but she still had to. Uh, a great responsibility as far as the house was concerned and and and, and she did it without complaining and she used to accompany me when we when we went to new york and at, for different activities with the young girls political activities okay etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, but she she was never a member <laughs> okay the, but but she was i think she was but she wasn't but, but she was more than a member no no definitely definitely and definitely somebody that you can come home to and kind of talk to about things she was mm -hmm. always uh, someone who would listen to everything that you had to say, yeah. which is which is always a good thing. I, w I want to get into um, before we get uh, uh, continue on to the story. There's a few a few questions here, so I want to go ahead and ask them now before we um, before we get too far along. Um, Antonio Torres says, uh, "What do you think is the disconnect between past Puerto Rican advocates, organizers, and current leaders?" Wow, it's a good question. Um, I think that uh, I, I have always maintained that uh, people that don't know their history don't have roots, okay? That you, the, the history, your history is your roots. It's what uh, makes you willing to do things differently. It's what makes you feel proud of who you are and uh, uh, doesn't... Uh, uh, make you afraid of engaging other people with different ideas. So I think that that's at the, at, at the root of our, all our problems. I think that our leadership, the leadership that I have seen throughout the years, uh, most of them have a lack of understanding of Puerto Rican history and how our community developed and how uh, uh, what, what has happened in Puerto Rico itself, because Puerto Rico being a colony of the, of the United States has suffered uh, 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 tremendously, okay, because of that uh, uh, colonial status, okay? Yes. Still happening today, yes. okay? And uh, I think that you need an understanding of, 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 of the true history of the Puerto Rican people enabled to connect to other Puerto Ricans because I feel that because of this, what I call colonized mentality, okay, that, uh, and that is the thinking that somebody else has to do it for you or somebody else will do it for you because somebody else is in command, somebody else is in power. And since Puerto Ricans are not in power in Puerto Rico, they have found it very difficult to be in power in the United States. Yes. Okay, also. Uh, so I think that the disconnect uh, is, it, it, part of the disconnect is that, and um, part is that for some reason, and, I, I, and I, ex I can't explain why, the newer generations and the, uh, uh, do, do, don't seek out, don't seek out the, the older uh, uh, leadership in, 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 in the community. Yeah. And, and, Usually, uh, when 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 they seek out the le the leadership, they want to seek out those that they feel safe with. You know that have think yeah. like they do, yes. and not 
someone like me that's a radical that you know wants to turn turn the world upside down because yes. i think that that's how we bring about real change yes okay so we don't trust each other okay a saying in puerto rico i mean uh, there was a saying and when i got involved in electoral politics uh later on uh, you know the i i heard the the non-puerto rican political leaders saying that the the problem with Puerto Ricans was that they had no leader. They always used to say that. Yeah. You guys don't have a leader. You know, and they used to point out to the black community they had Martin Luther King. Yeah. You know, the Mexican community had Cesar Chavez, yes. okay, et cetera, et cetera. Who do you have that can speak on, uh, on your behalf nationally? Yes. And we don't even have anyone that could speak on behalf of us locally, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like we're always fighting, okay? Each other. Because, because we're afraid of each other. Yeah. I think we're afraid of each other. We're afraid to be labeled. I can't go talk to him because they're going to say that I'm like him. Yes. You know? And, uh, and that happened to me a lot because I know that people uh, sidestep me because I had radical views, and I still do. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, I just, I just, let me get into a few more questions. And then, um, and actually, um, the, the, the other one's still frozen? Okay, because cool, cool. what we could probably do is we could probably um, move this one probably over there if you want. Um, that way people could be, will be able to see both. Um, Edwin Rivera, you know Edwin Rivera? Yes, I know. Yes, Hi, Edwin. Ed, Edwin Rivera says, I remember marching with the Young Lords and my grandmother once once shared her electricity when they got turned off on East Main Street back in the days, he says. Um, Alma Maya says, I remember buying the Young Lords newspaper when I was in high school. Um, let's see. <laughs> oh, we, have, we have a lot of comments here. Uh, Carolyn, your daughter says, 50, 55 years next Thursday. Mom says she liked intelligent men. <laughs> <laughs> Um, let's see. Uh, she married the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carolyn asks, who is we? Who were the other people involved with SPIC? Well, a, a lot of the people that were involved with SPIC are gone. Okay. You know, most of them. And I, I, I don't think that most Thank people uh, uh, knew them. Okay. Uh, but... But um, I'm trying to see if I can remember uh, anyone that may, 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 may still be alive or, or lives in Bridgeport or that uh, continue to be involved uh, in, in the community. Okay. So, uh, I, I really can't, can't, can't answer that, <laughs> Carolyn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Carolyn. It's not happening. And uh, one more question. Uh, let's see. Antonio Torres. Antonio Torres. Do you know Antonio Torres? Antonia. A Antonio. Antonio Torres. Antonio Torres. Torres. Yes. I'm trying to think because I know so many people. Like yeah, no, no. I mean, he, he's a fairly young man. Maybe uh, my, maybe about my age. Maybe mid-30s. Um, he's, involved, he's involved with the... Uh, with the... Uh, I, I, can't, I can't... It won't come to me right now. Uh, Puerto Rican... I can't think. Uh, Antonio, if, you, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I, I can't remember. I can't remember the organization's name. If you could just post it on here, and, and we'll talk about it. But he has another question. He says, "With the with with the uh, resurgence of activism post Maria within our community, how do you feel the Puerto Rican community can be equally more successful than the YLP?" Respectfully asking. More successful than the YLP? Yes. Um, I think that. You have to become militant. You, you, you cannot just rely on electoral politics. Okay? I think you have to uh, uh, organize on a massive scale. You have to build uh, mass organizations. That's one of the things that we have lacked in the community, yes. mass organizations. You know, we have organizations where there's uh, five, six, 10 individuals, 20 individuals at the most, but uh, mass organizations that have, that have, have a, an ongoing membership uh, and people that are loyal to it, 
we we haven't we haven't uh, been able to build the, the mass organizations, just a small group of people that get together, well intentioned and some of them very intelligent and very capable. Yes, <clears throat> but we haven't for some reason been able to build, you know, to have that transform into a mass organization that can represent a lot of people. Okay, I've always said that. <coughs> Again, when I was dealing with electoral politics, I looked at the numbers, okay, and the Democratic Party, for example, in the city of Bridgeport, the majority of the Democratic Party at that time that I looked at, this a few years back, okay, uh, were Puerto Ricans. The majority of the people that were registered Democrats were yeah. Puerto Ricans. Yeah. Yet, Puerto Ricans never elected a mayor, okay, and, and when we have had mayoral candidates, we have had other Puerto Ricans opposing them, okay? Yeah. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily bad because if, if it's a Puerto Rican and it's a bad candidate, it should be opposed. Of course. But I'm talking about being able to develop a block of voters. If you're going to take part in electoral politics, develop a block of voters that you can rely on as a base of power yes. and not just vote for whoever the machine tells you to vote. Mm, facts. So yes. I think that 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 uh, development organizations that are more effective than the young lords, uh, of course, today takes a new approach because uh, we're not in the militant days yeah. of the 60s, you know, when uh, the whole nation was on fire. Yes. Okay, and uh, there were different groups you know, that were organized, okay? We don't have that today. But I think that we're fast approaching the time when those organizations will come back, you know? And I hope that Puerto Ricans are among them. Definitely, definitely. Um, uh, again, I, I want to thank uh, Antonio Torres for these great questions. Antonio Torres is involved with the with the Connecticut Puerto Rican agenda. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have you have you I've if you're sort of heard of it. But. Yeah. So um and he has questions. He has another question. So we we're gonna ask him in a minute. Uh Arma Maya says that's true. We have we have tried many times in the past. Organizations have come and gone. Um let's see. And um uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it I'm gonna pass it on to um to Reagan so she so she could do what she's supposed to be doing here. And uh you see Antonio Torres right there? If you could ask that question. And then uh, just kind of just follow it from there on. We we we'll call All it right. with that. So, do you feel por the Puerto Ricans have identity issues related to nationality and race? And if so, do you feel that is connected to our community's issues? Your community to what? Um. If so, do you feel that it is connected to our community's issues? Uh. Uh, definitely, we have uh, uh, identity issues uh, as far as uh, ethnicity or nationality and race. Yes. The uh, 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 the the one thing that uh, that it, uh, we can clearly see, okay, is the whole question of Puerto Ricans at times calling themselves. Latins at times calling themselves Puerto Ricans at times calling themselves Spanish. Okay, for example, when I was coming up, uh, when I was uh, younger in my in my younger years in Bridgeport, yes. everybody used to say when they were asked, "What are you? Where do you come from?" I said, "I'm Spanish." Okay, because they 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 they, uh, they connected the language with the nationality. Yes. Okay, and yes. Uh, made no separation of, of, of the two. Okay. Um, and uh, organizations that grew at that time, <clears throat> for example, we had what was called the Spanish Coalition. Yes. <clears throat> well, in the Spanish Coalition, there were no people from Spain. There were no people from any other Latin American country at that time. I think there was one Cuban, okay? Yes. But yet, we call ourselves, uh, at that time, the Spanish Coalition. There was, uh, when we began the struggle in the, within the Young Lords for identity, uh, ethnic identity, Yes. okay, and uh, because we felt that that was crucial for Puerto Ricans, okay, uh, we began the struggle to change the name from, from the Spanish coalition, 
and I became the Puerto Rican coalition. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, definitely because uh, and still some people, okay, will say when they ask Puerto Rican people will say that they're Spanish. Yes. Oh, okay? I, I hear all the time. Uh, and I don't have anything against the uh, term Latino. It's a term that has its place. Uh, but it, it it needs to be used properly, uh, in it in its proper context. Yes. Okay. And sometimes it, it's used out of context. Okay. So that uh, you 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 don't I, I you don't have to negate who you are. Okay. Uh, uh, to to move forward or to push forward an agenda, or to or to be friendly with other people from other Latin American yeah. countries, okay, from other races. The race is uh, one of the what the issues, I think, that the question addressed, right? Uh, we have issues with race. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, most, most Puerto Ricans are a mixture, you know. I think that there are very few Puerto Ricans, if any, that can say that they are pure white yeah. or pure black or pure uh, mulatto. Yeah. Okay, because we're a mixture of uh, three races, at least three. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> we may find some more later on, but and I think that that's beautiful. Yes, I think that that that, that we have given an, an example to the whole world about how uh, races can come together. But having said that, let's say that there is still. Uh, racism in Puerto Rico and within the Puerto Rican community towards people who are dark of a darker uh, color. Yeah. Okay. There's it still exists. Yes. It doesn't exist at the level that it exists in the United States, but it exists. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Um, was, is there follow up or no? Um, there's a lot more comments and some questions. Sure. We we could, we could read some some more comments and questions. I think it's I think it's great that people are tuned in and uh, want to know more. Yeah, thanks everyone. There's a lot on here. Um yeah. Alma Maya says talk about ASPIRA oh, and okay. La Dr. Antonia. Okay, let's let's is that it for for her? She's commented quite a few times. Okay, so. well let's let's let, let's do that. Let's let's uh let's take the conversation and talk about Aspira. That's what she's talking about. I, I understood. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, Aspira was an organization that was uh, a form uh, by a group of people in the community uh, who saw education as key to the progress of the community. And uh, we uh, got together in Bridgeport and said, wow, it would be nice to have a, a, an Aspira chapter in the uh, in, in Bridgeport, yes. and uh, Cesar Bataya, late Cesar Bataya, was one of the leaders uh, in that in that in that struggle, and uh, and we uh, form a group in Bridgeport, uh, met with the Aspira board in in New Jersey, and uh, they told us that we had to go through a process. They had a process that we had had to go through. And uh, we went through the process, which in included getting the the uh, support from the local school board yes. and the mayor. Yes. And at that time, we were able to do that, uh, and we became a chapter of uh, of of, uh, of Aspira, one of the affiliates yes. of, of Aspira, which is a national organization yes. dedicated to education. Okay, they have what that's their exclusive uh, domain yes yeah, yeah. the um, and, and and the organization developed in Bridgeport okay and it became very su successful at one time uh, we had a million dollar budget oh wow. okay but uh, uh, problems did arise okay in terms of uh, or organizational problems that w we could not foresee. Okay, but we we noticed at one point that uh, we were about to what we call implode because uh, we we were running so many programs, okay, and we we're involved in so many things that uh, we could even though we were successful in what we were doing, yes, we couldn't afford them. And the reason why we couldn't afford them 
was because most uh, grants that are the non for profits get yeah. usually last three years. Mm. At the end of three years, you gotta go look for someplace else for the funding. Yeah. And some of that funding is not easy to get. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that uh, led to <coughs> led to <coughs> a decision by the organization to sell the building that we had on State Street, mm. pay to pay off. We had accumulated some debts that, that, that we couldn't pay from the money that was coming in yeah. to uh, grants. And uh, eventually the, the organization decided to move to its headquarters from uh, Bridgeport to Hartford, something, okay. something which I opposed, but I wasn't a, a member of the board at the time. Okay. But, uh, but but that was Aspira, and uh, uh, we had clubs in the in the high schools, Aspira clubs. Yes, okay? yes. And, and the, the students went there, and they learned about their history. They uh, they 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 learned uh, to to stay in school, and uh, we always told them, uh, you stay in school, you graduate, and then you come back and give back to the community. Yes, that was the Aspira process definitely that, that, that we uh, had uh, to do it uh, later on I believe that uh, the move to Hartford wasn't successful and uh, as far as I know they they cease to exist yeah yeah now um, I want to I get back we'll, we'll get to some questions later um, I want to thank everybody who's watching who's tuning in on Facebook again if you have any questions any comments go ahead and ask those questions um, and please don't forget to share this video too, so that other people could be able to, you know, uh, uh, tune in and and uh, and and, uh, and kind of indulge on on all the the wealth of, of knowledge of you know and information that we're getting from William Matos right now. I think it's important. Um, if you're at home right now, I mean, I know I know that a lot of you know uh, a, a lot of adults, right? A lot of a lot of older folks are watching, and, and and that's the beautiful thing. But if you're home right now and, and you have your kids around you, and and maybe you want to call them over and and kind of tell them a little bit about what's going on. Maybe it'll be a good idea. I mean, they might not stick around for too long, but I think that that that, that one of the issues we're having is that we're not doing that. We're not we're not reaching out to our kids and telling them, "Hey, come look at this, watch this, listen to this." You know, uh, we're letting our kids kind of dictate what they get to do all the time, and I think that we shouldn't do that so often. And so, if you're home and, and your kids are around, you know, call them over and say, "Listen, you know, look at this man. Look at the things he's done." And uh, and and maybe you you might be able to grab their attention. You know, Willie was telling us that when he, when he was just 12, 13 years old, he was researching and really and and, and really uh, 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 getting himself involved in, in in what's going on in the community and what's going on in Puerto Rico and 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 everything and really understanding that. So for me, I, I don't I, I don't think that Willie is like a rare like you know a specimen in the world. You know, I think that that other other kids out there um, could do the same. We just as adults have to kind of help them a little bit and, and kind of show them that 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 um that other people have done it and that it is okay to do those things, you know, um, as opposed to just taking pictures of our kids uh, wearing cool clothes and stuff. We should like take pictures of them doing homework and 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 really um, show them that doing the right thing is always the right thing and show them that doing good things like reading a book or or learning is also something that other people will will like as well. Um, and uh, and I don't want I don't want to get too much into that, but uh, we're, we're, we're just picking up on that. Yeah, words of wisdom again from my mother. She used to say, "Más hace el que quiere que el que puede." Those who want to will do more than those who can do. Yes, perfect. Okay, I, that, uh, I don't know whether the translation is clear. I, I, th I think I think okay. it is, I think no I, th I think but, it is clear. But what she was saying is, if you want to do something, you can do it, and and those that want to do something can, uh, will do it. Uh, you know, even better than those who can do it. Yes, yes, definitely. And, and, so and you you gotta have to you 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 have to want to do something. 